How's it going? Hello, John. All hey, right, son, how are you? Not too bad, thanks. Oh, good, mate. I like the beard. Yeah, it's trimmed down a bit, to be fair. It got long, but oh, I trimmed it? it down a bit. Yeah. Like a Viking warrior there, John. Like a Viking yeah. warrior, mate. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I've, I tried to do the baby things come out the other door. <laughs> <laughs> How's it all? How you been, mate? You been, how you been getting on, John? Yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, not bad. A bit frustrating at times, but um, yeah, it is what it is, you know? How yeah, about you? You're keeping yourself fit? You still staying active or...? Yeah, doing some runs, uh, doing my strength coach sent me some circuits and bits and bobs of doing strength work and uh, bought a bike, so I've been out cycling and doing bits of that, like round here there's woods and that, so I keep cycling through the woods and that, so that's good. Oh, good, mate, that's good, it keeps you, keeps you, in, keeps you involved. So, um, yeah, so thanks for coming on, John, um, really appreciate it, mate. Um, yeah, so we talked to you a bit about the mindset of boxing, like we've, we've had a couple of chats before about things, I know you've got a good mindset and that. Um, what's... First of all, let's go back to the beginning. How did the Mexican come about? How did you get into boxing? How did it, how did it all start for you? I know you had a few family members, um, but how did, how did it come about for you? How did you get into it, John? Yeah, when I was a kid, um, obviously uh, a, a relative of mine, Benny May, he was a boxer. So the yeah, I, I boxed boxer at the same club, but when I was a kid, I used to, he was so skillful. You won't remember me. Yeah, he's thing, he used to box with Tommy Lee and John King. They were, he had such good footwork and... And Speedy yeah, Joe, who's great amateur, yeah, and wasn't it? Rumble and that, yeah. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so I used to go and watch him. He took me to the gym a couple of times when I was a kid, but I never stuck at it. And then, um, yeah, I just went into football, playing that, and just packed up that. Then I sort of fell into boxing, really, because I was out drinking a lot, getting in trouble down Old Kent Road and all that. <laughs> and then um, my mate said he was going there to just lose that a bit Jack? Of Sorry, mate, yeah. Jack so, Charles, uh, he's doing his boxing, and he sorry, I just see him pop up. He's sad, oh, sure. but sorry, John. Yeah, yeah see, so, um, Old Kent Road. She started off boxing down the Old Kent Road, basically. Well, no, I was at the gym, up, but, tear ups. Yeah, well, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Council <laughs> stage, it all started. Council but, estate um, gym, yeah. Yeah, but um, <laughs> yeah, and I just went there to lose a bit of weight. Got bashed up a few times in sparring. And just kept going back to try and get my own back on them, and uh, just went from there, really. Oh, good mate. So, what was what was your um, what was your um, so what, what was? How did you get into your first fight? I remember you said there was a story, which, like when you first started, you sort of thrown in the deep end a little bit, weren't you? Yeah, well, your... my amateur coach uh, Terry Palmer, he come up to me one day and he said, like, you're in the gym all the time, you're sparring all the boys, and why don't you um, have a fight? No, it no, I'm not really into. It. I was still going out on the weekends on the piss and all that, and uh, he went, just have a fight, you're doing it all, and I went, no. Nah. And yeah, I remember what he said to me. He said, he's like going to the edge of a cliff and not looking over. He said, you're doing all the training, <laughs> have a fight. So I went, yeah, all right then. So then, um... And how old were you then, John? I was 18. It's old, isn't it, the start, the first fight, isn't it? Yeah, so yeah, a I was getting of, on a bit. <laughs> not old, not old. I mean, you're young, but I mean, a lot of, a lot of pros who make it to pro level start when they're kids, didn't they? Like, so. Yeah, I wish I would have started when I was younger, but, you know... I, I've got this far, so yeah, I'm happy. Yeah, no, you're done blinding, John, yeah. So um, what happened then, John? You had your first fight? Well, yeah, my first seven fights were cancelled, funny enough, with, like, God knows what, like, you know, people not turn up at shows or just a load of crap. So in the end, they said, oh, we're sticking into the championships. So I went into the uh, under-10 novice championships and I got a buy all the way to the, um, what was it, the London quarterfinals. Which I won that, and then I had to box the next night against a fella called David Groom from Elsfield who beat me. Uh, beat me. Beat you. And it's just, uh, it's just gone from there, really. Quality, quality. And when, when did it, when did it all kick in for you to start taking it right seriously, and getting in the pro, and really going up into probably that about, level, John? Probably when I was about twenty twenty one. I remember I went into a, another championships, and I boxed a kid from uh, Epsom and Newell. I don't know if they're still about. Kid called Sam, and we had an absolute tear up. We just stood in the middle of the ring for three rounds and just went just at it. And I remember it. Getting, yeah, no, I remember getting out of the ring and I was fucked. And I literally <laughs> bit was on the floor. Uh, I won the fight, but I was just Left. bit. And, and um, I just thought, I need to have, uh, take it seriously or walk away from it now. Yeah, and, exactly. Uh, from there, I just I took it serious from there and ain't gone back since. 
What was your vision at that point when you started like, taking it seriously? What was like your big picture? Was it like, now you went pro and you thought, take it serious. Was you seeing yourself as a British champion or was you just at that stage? What, how was, what, what got you to, to focus? What was the goal for you at that time? To be honest, it was just to be a good amateur at that time. Um, as I said to you before, I've always sort of done my career in stages. Mm. So at that time, it was, you know, to get into the ABAs and maybe get into England or to represent London and bits like that. You know, I got to represent yeah. London, but um, I never got the chance to box for England because, quite frankly enough, I weren't good enough. But um, yeah, yeah so, and then I got to, I think I was 24 and uh, yeah. I just lost in the ABAs and I was a bit gutted and I didn't know what to do, whether to carry on or pack it up because I thought I ain't going to go nowhere in the amateurs. I knew my style sort of the pros because I like to sit yeah. on the shots and have a bit of a tear up. So then um, yeah. I was speaking to my mate who's a big boxing fan and I said, like, I, I don't know what to do and I'm half thinking about packing it in and uh, I don't think I'm good enough to turn pro. And he just basically said to me, you'd rather give it a go than rather than look back at it and regret it. Walk, so, yeah, the regret, yeah. Yeah, and uh, so I went, yeah, and I started speaking to Al Smith, who put me on to a few people. And I've got a manager, like, um, the late Dean Powell, who's a great manager. Oh, yeah. And then, uh, yeah. And then it's, yeah, it's just gone from there, really. Because, yeah, you, I mean, I see something Rio Ferdinand talking about when he started, and in football, he said he'd like first see himself playing for the England schoolboys, whatever, and he visualised himself playing for the the second team. Then he got in the second team and he sees himself then going for the first team. And then he got in the... You know, that, that sort of same sort of way you're, you've sort of approached it, you know what I mean? It's very similar in in the mindset of listening to him, you know? Um, yeah, you know, some, cause some people start off with, with a big picture, like the end goal, and some people just, you know, chunk up, I like to call it, chunking up, chunking yeah, that's, up into that's the big picture. Done. Yeah. Like when I, when I so, first turned pro, every, every, everyone ripped me off, said like, he's never going to make it. He's not even going to get to Southern Area level. And I thought, oh, it'd be nice to get to Southern Area, but I'll try and get to 5-0. Yeah. And, and I've done 5-0. and o, Then I got to 10-0. and o. Then I think I got, it was either I got to 11 or my prize fighter was in 11. And then I lost. And then obviously I had to get a couple more wins and I won the Southern Area. So I proved everyone wrong then. So, um, yeah, it's just, it's just been great since then, really. So, like, once you got into the British, that must have been a dream when you started visualising that, when you sort of, you know, you had that in your mind. I mean, what was it like for you mentally, John, at that time? Was it like, was it in your head every day? Was it just pure focus? Was it, how did, how did your mind, how did you train your mind for that? You know, how did you train, you know, looking back, even if you're doing it unconsciously, what sort of thought process was you going through to, to get there? Well, when I got a call to say that, oh, you've got, um, you can have a crack at British against Gary Corcoran. You know, to be honest, I didn't care who I was fighting. I had my shot at the British. That's the belt I always wanted. That's the belt. I'd, out of all the belts in the world, I love the British the most. Yeah. And uh, they said, oh, you've got Gary Corcoran. And I went, oh, that's right on my street. I went, this is just going to be a terror. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it was not wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, I, I sparred Gary a few times before, so we know each other. And we always got into a tear up in sparring. I was like, ah, this is going to go off. This is going to... And then... Um, I was just buzzing from that, really. Um, you know, I, I was getting goosebumps every time I fought a fight, but fighting for the British title. And then I thought, I see he's really going to go this fight. And so then, was, you know, it was, I was just happy. And even people said, like, in that training camp, I had the, uh, they said you could see a glint in your eye. You was just, everything was like, I had, um, like everything was, uh, oh, what's the word I'm trying to think of? But, no, but yeah, they just said, in like, alignment with it. Yeah, you was just focused in alignment with it, sort of thing. Yeah, and they just said you had the glint in your eye, and you was just going at it hundred percent and just getting on with it. Really, don't get me wrong. I always train hard. I'm one of the hardest trainers in the gym. Like, yeah, because I always thought I, I know I'm not the best skilled fighter, but as long as I'm the fittest, I'll beat everyone. Just to keep, just to have toe to toe your sort of style, wouldn't it? You just a brutal, it, yeah. have a straight the sort of quality. So with the um, <laughs> I know you. Lo I know we, we yeah, then um, went on to lose it, and um, with a battle. Yeah, what is what is your um, mindset about going back now? Because you were about to have a rematch, weren't you? You were about to have a rematch from that, right? Yeah, I was. I was three or four weeks away from the rematch with Jenkins, who beat me. Um, I was in a good place, to be fair. I was. Um, 
everything was going well in training. I was, uh, a lot of people said, like, you look like you've rolled a few years back because I was just flying, you know, I was happy. Um, and again, they said, you got that glint in your eye again. And, uh, yeah, it was just, I was just buzzing to go. My weight, I don't think I'd ever been that um, good on my weight before, you know. I was only literally a couple yeah. of pounds away four weeks before. And, um, yeah, I just felt good. And uh, when it got cancelled, I was gutted, you know. I just thought, yeah, I bet. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was, um, and then I'll see you after, and I'm saying to you, and, you know, you said it could be a blessing, but... Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah it could be a blessing, it. mate. It could be a blessing. This is one of them things, and you've got to look at this time to reflect on things and get, you know, we've got a lot of time now to sit sit down and um do you take the rematch or face Connor Ben uh, off a uh, uh, you took you took the rematch, didn't you already? Someone's asked a question. You've yeah, took the rematch. But basically, um there was there was talks back in October about Connor Ben. Yeah. It's back, a lot of back and forth. To be to, I, I wanted the fight, Ben wanted the fight, but then the money weren't great, and the time I paid out, this that, and the other, I wouldn't have earned that much. So, um, yeah, they done a few things that pissed off my tail. And then, yeah, I flushed you. I think it was in yeah. March. They offered flushed me uh, John? fight for March. John? And I give them their due, they come up with the money. But John, one sec, mate. Al Al yeah. He said, like, you've got two fights, you can either have Connor Ben, and I said, oh, we'll have it. He said, oh, you can have the rematch for Jenkins. John, have you got your hand at the bottom? I don't know yeah, if I can hear you then. You there, mate? You there, mate? He's Sand's gone. He connects to me. Oh, the fella. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The fella. I lost you. I couldn't hear you. Three miles away. <laughs> but, um, so, um, where was I? You were talking about, about, the, about um, the fight. Connor's online, apparently. Someone said he's having a listen. But he's saying about them. Um, I know there's no hard feelings between your mates. It's just business. Isn't it? But, I mean... So you had the fight. You didn't work out the. He's talking about the the, um, the purse and stuff, um, but you wanted to go for the British again before you took that on. I think. Yeah, well, they that. basically come up to me and they said, um, "Connor's well, Colin's team's come out of the money. Uh, you can either have that or you can have the rematch with Jenkins. And um, for Jenkins, it's for the British and Commonwealth. And I just said I want the Jenkins fight. And they said, "Well, there's more money in the Connor fight." I said, but Jenkins is the fellow that beat me, so I want revenge. I said, I'll beat Jenkins, and then we'll go for, um, for Connor. Thank you and from now there. It's made mandatory. Yeah, now he's been made mandatory for the... Um, oh, for show. the winner of you two? Yeah. Oh, so quality, we're, mate. We're I mean, fans are going to love that one. The, yeah, don't get me wrong. Me and Connor are going to be a great fight, but um, yeah. I want revenge. You know, it's, This one's personal to me. Connor's... Yeah, the day's yeah no, I, can, I, I understand that. Yeah, this is a bit more of a... A heartfelt thing, and it? it's like he took your belt and you yeah, went back. Definitely. I understand that, mate. And when you get the Commonwealth as well, that's even better, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's two for the two for the price that's of one. It, yeah, it's all definitely. about uh, it's all about yeah, the glitter, my, isn't my, it? Uh, <laughs> my eyes is all on the uh, British. To be fair, the uh, Commonwealth is just a bonus, but um, just a touch, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. So, um, what do you what would you recommend to any boxers who are getting into it now, John? Like with their mindset, what would you what what would you sort of you know what or what do you see in the gym with fighters? What makes them, some fighters go the distance and want to go through? Because there's loads of boxers out there. How comes only some? Like, very rare people get the British title, let alone any, you know, very rare. Out of all the thousands of boxers out there, you know, probably un under 1% is going to get to the British level. So what, what is the difference, do you think? Is it that commitment? Is it that... I'd say it's hunger. I think you've got to want it, you know. Um, I, I live in... I, you know, I live the sport. I, I'm always eating well. I'm always training. Um, I'm always watching fights and keeping up with boxing. You know, I just love the sport, and I think you have to to um, get anywhere. Who's your favourite, John? My favourite's Barrera. Barrera, yeah, that makes sense. It's, it's, um, it's mad because my favourite British fighter is actually uh, Nigel Ben, and now I want to fight his son. So <laughs> <laughs> that's madness, isn't it? He was animal, wasn't he? He, oh, he, 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 he could have a straight the mate. Fucking hell, yeah. What was that first round I see him with? Who was that one with a big famous first round? I think it was the first round. It was a mad round. He went through the ropes, come back in again. Do you know what I'm on about? The fight? Oh, um, ah, it yeah, was a blinding, blinding fire. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was a quality, wasn't it, that one? Yeah, quality it was fight. An animal, yeah. So, um, 
We talk about mindset and things, John, with a lot of boxing. I mean, do you do, practice a lot of visualization to sell when we speak about we spoke about things like that before about visualization and moving forward and you know what's your sort of mindset behind that when you when you're focusing for a fight? Are you always seeing the outcome? Are you like are you practicing seeing the win? You know, like on the next fight. Um, until I, I probably did do it, and yeah, I've always you know vision having fights and being in there with certain people, but I didn't realize I was doing it until I spoke to you. you yeah, and um, and then now you've said it. I do try to like visualize it more. It. Don't get me wrong; I'm not um great at it, but I am working on it. It's just um, yeah, you know, it's it's trying Something to adapt it all really, but yeah, it's it's good because you see, you must do it, you must have done it unconsciously, and that's what a lot of people do. Like a lot of actors, a lot of you know, Jim Carrey said he started visualizing. He used to go up to Mulholland Drive in America and visualise himself like all producers coming to him saying, I like your work. He was working as a pizza boy or something. He had no money at all. He was skint in 1983 or something. Drive up to the um, drive up to uh, Mulholland Drive in Beverly Hills and he'd plot up and near all the houses and he'd sit and visualise. And he said, I've never done it because I knew what I was doing. I've done it because it made me feel good. So I drive home and think, yeah, I've got them things, you know. Yeah, I yeah. will have them things. And he said, that was it. He said, well, I wasn't doing it because I understood I was programming. I've done it because it just made me feel good. And then, you know, next thing you know, he... He um, becomes the Hollywood blockbuster star that he created. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, so what what would what sort of advice would you give any amateurs, John, coming out there? For amateurs, you know, obviously now getting onto his mind. So you, as I said, you got to visualise things. But for me, it's all about hard work. As long as you work hard, um, yeah, it pays off. I've, I've heard this a lot. I was, I was beating Sir Jimmy Ball out the football, and he said the same thing. His dad put a little bit of belief and give him a little bit of vision. He said, like he said, he go, Jim, if you can, if you can see yourself doing it, like the the truck. He says that about the football coach telling him to do something, come inside and go out. He said, I couldn't do it. It didn't feel right to me. His dad said, Jim, just do what you fucking want. At the end of the day, he went, you think it's better for you to go? He went, do it. And he said, I started doing what I wanted to do, and I started pinging goals in, and I banged the hat trick in. And he said, then I thought, well, actually, I can do it. So he started seeing the next light. But he said the same as you that he started seeing his different. You know different visions of level, but he said what people don't realize you have the vision, but you go, you have it, you just still have to commit, you have to put that hard work in, you know what I mean? You have to put you know them hours and raise your standards, basically. Yeah, that's, that's it. Like, I've, I think hard work is the most important thing, you know. Everything I've always done, I've, I've worked hard at, and um, that's probably where I get my confidence in fighting. I know I've left everything in the gym, I work my bollocks off in the gym, even my age now, you know. and um, yeah, I suppose that is where my confidence comes from. And, um, yeah, you I, that's it. where I get a lot of respect. Yeah, that's it. And I think yeah. that's where people respect me, you know. It's no secret that Al Smith didn't want me at first. But where I just kept going back and pestering him and turning up in the gym and <laughs> working hard. You yeah, see, that he, must he, have been he, a bit... That, that... That must have been a vision in your head because something to keep pulling you. You must have this vision. I'm going to be a pro. I'm going to be a pro. I'm going to be. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. For you to keep going back and knocking and getting rejected and coming yeah, back no, and knocking you know, again. I like, I like to prove people wrong as well. Um, you know, a lot of people would ne thought I'd never get Southern Area level. I got Southern Area level. Then I was like, oh, he won't beat this kid, so I beat that kid. And then I remember when um, I boxed for the uh, English title. And the fellow I was fighting, he was a bit of a puncher, and he went, oh, he's got to do his turn up and knock John out. You know, I got out one of the knockouts of the year in that fight. And um, then I had Gary Kakora, and everyone was like, oh, he's boxed for a world title. John's not on his level. He's he, he's just about uh, English level. And then I got in there and stopped Gary Kakora. And uh, yeah, Brilliant. I just love proving people wrong. Brilliant. Brilliant, mate. I mean, Sam's just popped up. What was the, what was the, what was the title fight you had at Camden? Camden, was that, Camden. Was that some, did you, well, it was something, wasn't it? Oh, Years no, ago, I went to Camden. Uh, yeah, that was uh, just an eight-rounder, I think. Yeah, it was a good fight, that. I went there with Sav. I just see Sav pop up, and he put um, the Mexican. I ain't even asked you. How's that all come about? I know, I, we, we all sort of know your style. You fight like a Mexican, but how did it, how did it crop up, John? Newton? Did you name yourself here? How did the name come about, mate? Cheers. I was going to the ABAs and my mate Keaton put on a um, uh, Facebook. He's from Peckham. He fights like a Mexican. He's the Pexican. And Mexican. There, yeah, I think John Denham from Boxing Story on me. People just come up to me. And Brilliant. Amateur shows going, oh, that's the Pexican. It's the Pe and then it's just something <laughs> there, really. 
It's a great name to be fair. <laughs> it is, isn't it? It is brilliant. When I when I first heard it, I fucking loved it because. You know, everyone, I heard about you when you was going through it and everyone said you fight like a Mexican and like you love a toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Even when you was amateur, I heard of you, you know what I mean? And um, yeah, so it was a great, when I heard that, I thought, what's a blinder? Do you ever have no, the sombrero on? Nah, do you know, I'm not really into all that. You know, uh, when, I get to the, uh, like when I get to the venue, the only thing I want to do is fight. I don't want to take no notice of the crowd. That's why if you watch me when I fight, I walk to you, the ring mode up. I don't, the only person I want to focus on is the person I'm fighting, and that's it. A bit like so, Tyson, um, that's what I said about Mike Tyson. He's my favourite, isn't he? And when, when he was back in his prime, he'd walk in with just a cup. He'd cut an, an O in the middle of a towel, throw it over his head, walk in with his head it, yeah. down, took it off, done the job, he walked back out again. Never, I love that sort of sort of fight. And like, it's just born in a minute, you know what I mean? Yeah, no. Hit him with bad intention. A lot of people have said to me, a lot of people have said, um, why wow, aren't you walking with a sombrero? And I did think about it, and I thought, you know, I might do it, and unconsciously I'll be thinking, oh, look at me, I look like right, I'm up walking to the ring, and that's not my job. My job is getting there and fight. And so that's what yeah, I Yeah, that's, that's just the mindset that suits people. You know, there's no wrong or right, is there, John? This is like, some people, it helps, it helps uplift them, you know, having that big ent entrance. And some people, like, you know, look at um, Tyson Fury, he loves it all, yeah? But then you get yeah. people like um, Tyson who just walk in with his nut down and just want to get a job done. There's no, so it's just it's whatever sort of works for you, ain't it? Ain't worth trying to do something that's to make yeah. you feel uncomfortable. You need your brain it's, in the, it's the in same the right. as all this. Um, people go, oh, you should talk up a fight this that, and that. But for me personally, everyone knows I turn up to have a tear up, and I don't need to talk yeah. a fight out because I'm the night. Yeah, I've never heard you. I've never anyway. heard you really bad mouth anyone or nothing like that. You, you take it professionally, didn't you? Yeah, at the end of the day, I know on that night I'm going to be able to punch you in the face anyway. So what's the point of talking when I'm going to be able to... <laughs> yeah. It's true though, isn't it? Yeah. The thing is with me, you know, growing up where we grew up, if someone starts giving it to you, the only thing you know to do, you don't give it back, you just hit them. You don't give them a chance yeah. to hit you. So, yeah. so I know, if I, I don't want to start losing this shit at a press conference and start throwing yeah. tables. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just just wait, yeah. Me, yeah. <laughs> As you, you've never had nothing like that at all, John, in all, the, in all your career so far. I've never got a bit of heated before, weigh-ins and stuff. They, um, they can sometimes get a bit heated, the weigh-ins, can't they, sometimes? Sometimes. I've, I've been at a few press conferences and people have said something and I've just had to bite me, like, you know, just bite down on my teeth and just, all right, I'm gonna, you're going to get it on the night. And to be fair, anyone who's given it to me, I've had, ended up stopping them on the night. So, um, yeah, everyone keep talking shit to me. <laughs> Keep winding me up, yeah. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Do the talking in the ring. Local boy, that's it. Paul's there. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, mate, local boy. Mill supporter and all, you? John, like me, both that's Millwall. It, yeah, massive Millwall fan, yeah, definitely. Come on, you Lions. But um, it's been a mad year this year, isn't it? No football, no boxing, it's unbelievable. And it, ev everyone I'm, gets I'm knocked back there, It's a fucking joke, isn't it? <laughs> What's this one? Some army we took to Basildon Centre. From South London that night. Oh yeah, it was all me yeah. and West Ham went off there, didn't it? Or something? Is that what happened that night? Uh, Basildon. I, I thought it was no. It, we weren't no, Basildon, was it? Brentwood. Brentwood. No, there was loads of West Ham and me and um, It all ended up turning into a football fucking act, didn't it? And that was uh, when I boxed uh, Kokora, and he was a traveller. So all the travellers and uh, oh, fans well, that's what it was. Yeah. Oh fuck, man. Um, what did someone put in here earlier? What do you think that little Dennis McCann? He looks mustard. Yeah, he's a talent, Dennis. Um, things with Dennis as well, he, not only is he skillful, he works hard. Like, usually I say, travellers boys, they usually, they usually got the skills that they might lack a bit of like, hard work and gym, but he, he's got it all, yeah. And he's got the gift of the gab as well. Once you put him in front of a camera, he don't stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> but he's a nice I've, kid though, I, I've got a lot of time for Dennis. I've got him on coming on next, next Saturday, I think. I want to have him come on, so I'm looking forward to talking to him <laughs> about it. Nice five hours ahead. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, he doesn't stop. I've seen it when the cameras turn off and he's still talking. <laughs> still going, still running. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> nah, he's good stuff. Really? I like this. He's got a lot of time. Yeah, what I've seen of him, I've seen a couple of um, cutting his bats. He's got that um, mad sort of Nazim style, isn't he? Like Prince Nazim, the way he bends and. Yeah, he's, you know, he's a. Uh... I don't know what way I'm mean, way easy, I can't even think. But you know, he's got long long arms, he's a southpaw. He's a... And he's in your company. Him and, um, 
Yeah, that's it, yeah. There's a lot of youngsters in my camp now. There's a lot, a lot of up-and-comers coming through, yeah. Cool, eh? So what are you going to take? So, what's, your, what's, your, what's your future in the long run? Will you always stay in the boxing, do you think? you always keep your foot in the water? I don't know. Years down the line? Um, yeah, I don't know. I will stay in boxing, but uh, I only like the fighting part of it. You know, it's, um, <laughs> that's why I do it. <laughs> that's why <laughs> uh, I <know>. <laughs> I will stay in it. But it's, uh, I might have to break away from it and try and find out what I want to do because, to be honest, that's the thing what scares me. Like, I don't know what I want to do apart from box. And like when I said to you, this is probably my last year in boxing, but now with all this going on, I might have to extend it a bit longer. But, Another um, year, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah no, you will yeah, definitely. Honestly, but this I, is I honestly just. I don't just... know what I want to do. This is what you. This is what I always talk about visualizations of people to. Like me and Jamie Ara, for instance, we want to go and help the footballers because the same thing, when people, they're good when they're in football and they get to that level. Uh, now, Jamie said he fucked his career up because once he got to the the level of what he wanted to be, he said, I sort of yeah. lost my passion. Once I got, he said, I always visualised myself playing for Tottenham. He said, when I got there, I never, I sort of just got, got involved in the moment and it, and like the goal had been achieved and he did, they weren't, no, we weren't focusing on the next goal. So, you know, end up, getting injured and bits and pieces happening and he said if I knew now what I, what I know now he said I should have been visualising myself making the ace, the first team of England I should have been visualising myself as the best goal scorer for Tottenham and I should have been you know raising your standards and it's, so I think in the sport we need to keep doing that but then he said when people come out and they come out of retirement like, you know like a lot of footballers they either go into gambling alcohol drugs or whatever, because they just, as you say, they've got this money, they come out, and what do, I, what do they know about football? Football's their life, and all of a sudden, no one's helped them create the next level, and, you know, we can get caught up in here and now, so I think it's really important that I think there should be more help for um, sportsmen when they come out, because I don't think people realise the commitment and habits that you 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 um, you get used to, do you know what I mean? Like the running, the fitness, the food, the, you know, you don't want to do it, but you still do it, and it's, it becomes your whole life, and then all of a sudden, it stops and you can do what you want. And, you know, so for some people, not everyone, but some people, it can be like, a, you know, they could be a bit lost. And I think, you know, it's good that we, we should sort of keep working with people's minds that to keep moving forward. It ain't over. It's just another chapter now. We're going, uh, do you know what I mean? Another way. But it's, keep that self-discovery. Yeah, yeah. Keep, keep asking yourself questions. Yeah, what, when? Because... Um, yeah, in the football, you know, I see it, it, we want to get into the FA and stuff and help with a lot of it because you've got the new players that come in who can lose their vision. So they've got the skills. And the same in boxing. You get these great kids with skill. And then when they get into pro level, their arse might go a little bit in front of the big lights or sank and, or they're just not focusing properly and they lose their... They're not putting the effort in because they haven't got the right vision, the, the right mindset. And they've got all the, all the skills. And you, know, you get... Um, the same with footballers. A lot of the youngsters go in, get a bit worried, start start changing their self and confidence to like, oh, I could get a sack from this team, or they might they might not sign me, and they start focusing on what they don't want. And I think there's a lot of there's a big a big gap in the mental health side of sports that I think needs to be filled, John. Do you know what I mean? Like, especially in boxing, because with boxing, it's a tough man's thing. Yeah, like I, I, I said, like they'll have a, you'll have a rabbit's foot, you'll have a, a travel over a rabbit's foot. That's all my bit of luck. You, you can't talk about fucking like, the minds to most people because they say bad luck. Yeah. You, know, all, you, have, you get a lot of superstition thing that I've noticed with boxers. But they'll train the body like until they're fucking, you know, as you say, they work fucking five hours a day whipping up and stripping and they'll go for pain barriers. But it's working this as well. Yeah, You can't work your body without a mind. You can't make the work, the, you know, it needs to be both. You've got to, to get that high achievement level. So I think um, there's a big, a big, a big um, hole in the, old boxing world especially that I think in gyms we need to start I think it's happening a bit more now because I got the Conor McGregor and people like this speaking out quite openly about it but um I think in that in the fighting sports it's okay to work on your mind you know what I mean it's, it's not um there's nothing wrong with it sort of thing yeah no, um yeah no, I agree with that definitely um as you said about people lived literally my whole life evolved around boxing there's certain yeah. things I won't do because I think ah oh, say if I do this I'll get injured and you know, yeah. so everything for me evolves around boxing. So, and even I think I've been full time there for three, four years. And people's going, oh, you, this is the time to think about what you want to do after boxing. I don't know what I want to do. I just want to box. That's, that's it. Stay for, so, um, Oh, fuck it. How long did he do it for? Um, what's his name? No, Mass. No, Mass. Who am I thinking of? Duran. 
He's still yeah, fighting yeah. at 60 when he won't give up at all, would he? Oh, he, he never stopped, <laughs> did he? But, uh, you know, I, I've got kids in that, so I've got to start thinking. No, yeah, yeah. Kids in that, but, um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but, uh, but not yet. Yeah, no, I, think, keep... I think in a lot of sports, I think, yeah, as you said about in like, football and like all the contact sports and that, but I think in a lot of sports, people don't look into the mind, and I, I think it's starting Definitely. to come out a lot now. It is, yeah, and I mean, even mad stuff like Conor McGregor on his last fight looks back. He looked back to the old Conor. He looked fucking focused. He was sharp, and he said, "What he's done now is when he was when he was in um when Conor was out in um when he's in L.A. He see that basketball player." LeBron James, and he read an yeah. article on him, but he spends 1.5 million a year on his health. So, like, he'll have a doctor with him full time, he'll have a nutritionist, he'll have a massage, a masseuse, he'll have his own, he's gonna have these machines you get him with ice and all that. He spends 1.5, fucking spend 1.5 million dollars a year on it's crazy, but he does. That's what, yeah. he, that's what he fucking spends acupuncture like, every week. He's like, Re helping the body recover, you know, working it as maximum as he can. And, you know, he's the best player in the world. So, McGregor, McGregor said, I read this article and I thought, do you know what I I don't spend nothing on myself. I don't spend a fucking dinner. So now McGregor's took the nutritionist with him all the time and he's got a doctor with him all the time and he's, he's raised his standards. And I think that's what, you know, makes great fighters. You know, like Miami Dali, I love that. I always keep saying this one to fighters is that he said, I learned more from my losses than any of my wins. Because sometimes it's the best thing that can happen to a fighter is to lose and they think, fuck, I need to reevaluate myself and step up or, you know, work that bit harder sort of thing, you know? Yeah, no, I definitely agree. With it. I've definitely learned a lot more from my losses than my wins. You know, the wins you probably don't even think about that much. You just you just buzz you in and celebrate with your mates. But you know you, what, bro? You hit the nail. Look back at it. You hit the nail. Bang on your head there. You don't lose. If you get in a, a ring and you have an easy fight, you ain't learned a thing really. You just got to beat someone up, and you know there's no learning there. Yeah, it's great. It's a great buzz. A great feeling. But you do, you learn in the trenches, don't you? You learn when you drop your hand and take a right hand and you think, fuck me, I better put that up again next time. Do you know what I mean? It's like, no, it's like anything in life. Like, my, my last it's... fight with Jenkins, I can, I can tell you everything I've done wrong just from thinking it in my head, you know? Before I even, I, I, I don't think I watched that fight back for about two months. And, um, but I watched it back in my head, God knows how many times, because I, time. I knew what I was doing wrong. Yeah, I, 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 there's loads of things. And, um, I'll, see, I'll see a thing on um, sports psychology, you know, about the same thing that... Um, that a lot of good, like good athletes, they'll always re, re if they ever, if they lose a game or whatever. Golfers, they'll do it. They'll sit and reflect, and they'll, they'll what they'll do is again and again and again is we re, re replay the match if it's a boxing match or a football match or whatever, and they'll keep going through their part and what they could have done better and at what they should have done, and they sort of just like they sort of unconsciously reprogram their brain to do them things as if they've done them. They start seeing that more than the actual fight in the end. They, what I should have done is slip the jab or, you know, I should have come from the right-hand side or whatever whatever it is. But, you know, and all these great athletes, we see that they all do this. They finish whatever they lose and they'll go over it in their head and, and they'll sort of keep rehearsing it as if they never, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I know. That's well, a... I don't for about two months. I was just sitting there replaying things in my head. I didn't do this, I didn't. I should have done this, I should have. But, you know, should have, would have, could have, I didn't do it and I lost. But um, that's why I want the rematch because I want to put it right. Yeah, I can't wait for it, mate. It's going to be a belt. Everyone's looking forward to it. Can I? Well, Berman's <laughs> is rooting for you and Peckham and Wharf Road. Everyone's got you. The old meal wall, mate. It's going to be a, yeah, be a blinder, John. Be a blinder. No, but, um, when, yeah, when do you I'm think it'll be now? It. When, when do you think it'll be now, fella? How, when, how long are we talking? How long do you think, mate? I don't know. Well, I think when it just got cancelled, and I'll, I'll come and see you, they were saying that I think it was July 11th or 7th. But with everything going on, I don't know whether it's what's going on so, oh, yeah, um, lucky, just... in some in some respects mate in some respects you're, you're at the front of the chain you now because i know everything's got a like boxes that outweigh another six months they're gonna have to wait another six months you're still at, you're at the front really which is quite it's, it's not yeah, too bad so, um, when it opens up they're gonna give you what we probably get your 10 weeks training camp again or something like that do you reckon or maybe a bit longer to be fair i probably i probably wouldn't even need a six weeks um to camp just before the, the last fight we only had about I think it might have been six, seven weeks. Six, seven you know, weeks. Uh, yeah, because Al just said to me, you go too hard, too, uh, too much. He said, you, train, gonna, you push yourself shorten, too much. Yeah. He said, so we're going to um, shorten the training down, like the, the amount of weeks you're doing. He said, obviously, tick over, do what you do. But um, and in six, seven weeks before, that's when you can go for it. And um, that's what he done. That's why I started to feel brilliant. You know, I was, I was feeling really good. And then uh, and they pulled the plug. <laughs> I'll drop that then. I pulled the flat. Sorry about it, mate. Drop that. 
So who was your boxing idols all, all in all? John, I've just got a question coming through. Who's, who was your boxing idols? So we said you've you've got um your favorite your favourite have been Nigel Ben and um Brera. Yeah, Brera's my favourite yeah. and then my, probably my yeah, Brera and then like Nigel Ben, but also like uh, Eubanks as well. As much as he's a thing, I just like the way he fights. And I only started to like him like the last couple of years, to be honest, when I watch his fights back. Um, it's just, I don't know, it's just so many people. I like, I like Hopkins. I'm a big fan of Hopkins. Yeah. Um, I like, obviously, everyone loves Mayweather, but I can watch him. But after a while, it gets a bit boring. I like a bit of action. So you like the tear ups, like yeah. Yeah, I like a lot of like the Mexicans, Marvin Agler you know, and Hitman Earns and all yeah. that sort of stuff. Yeah, and a lot of the Mexicans that has uh, Marquez yeah, yeah. and people like that. You know, uh, I like Brandon Rios. Who was that? Oh, fan of Brandon Rios. Do you ever watch him? Uh, he didn't have any bad jumps. It's Salvador Sanchez. Salvador. Yeah, it's an East fight. Yeah, yeah. He died at like 21 or 22. Yeah. He was fucking mustard, wasn't he? I yeah, know for a lot of people. There's a couple of what, a mustard men that dying like too young or. Yeah, you know, and he was only. I think, yeah, he died in a car crash or something, didn't he? And he only done boxing yeah. to become a doctor. He didn't even want to fight. He was just good at it. And he mad, didn't it? The stories. But, um, yeah, that's it. But yeah, the old, the old Mexicans, mate. I love the Mexicans. But, um, yeah, John, so thank you very much, mate, for coming on. The good to fucking been brilliant, mate. Um, and listen, we're wishing you best for the future, mate. We're going to be all behind you, or uh, me, wall, Burmese, the road is just waving in there. So, you know, we're looking <laughs> forward to seeing you win it back, mate. You've definitely got it. The energy is going to be all love for you, mate. Do you know what I mean? There's nothing but love for God. Definitely. So, Cheers, mate. Um, no, thank you very much, mate. I really appreciate your time. And um, I'll catch up with you soon. I'll give you a bell, John. Definitely. Thanks for having me, and I'll catch up with you soon. Thank you, John. Cheers, mate. brother. Cheers, Bye, mate. mate. Bye. A lovely fella, Johnny Garton. Really um, proper gentleman, do you know what I mean? He's a little sister there, right, Joe? Is that his mum? And, um, yeah, he's a proper gentleman, John. Um, yeah, I love the way he handles himself in the, in the boxing industry. As he said, keeps his mouth shut, gets the job done. Um, yeah, honourable, you know? Old school, actually, old school. But, um, yeah, so thanks all for coming on, guys, and, and, and watching. Um, back again tomorrow at 7, so... I look forward to seeing you all then. And um, let's all be there for John at the next fight, eh, chaps? See you later, Sav. See you later, guys.